Okay, let's do this mathematical analysis. We have taken two signals in the generation of my modulated waveform. The two signals are modulating signal and the carrier signal. The carrier signal is nothing but V1. Let me express V1 as Vc cos 2 pi Fct, where Vc is nothing but the peak amplitude of the carrier signal. Let me take uh, V2, which is my modulating signal as Vm cos 2 pi Fmt. I repeat, to keep everything simple, we are always assuming my modulating signal to be single frequency signal. Otherwise, in practice, Fm can be any frequency from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and any practical information signal will consist of all possible frequencies or all in simple words it will consist of multiple frequencies from this range uh, which represent the audio frequencies okay now uh, let us talk about something very important in terms of a non-linear device if i consider any non-linear device let's say the input to the non-linear device is vi and the output of the nonlinear device I'm measuring in the form of output current IO. Because the device is nonlinear, the relationship between output and input signals will also be nonlinear in nature. Any general form of nonlinear relationship, be it an exponential function, be it a logarithmic function, or any nonlinear function, any general form can be written in the form of series expansion. For example, I can write IO as I0 plus A1 VI plus A2 VI square plus A3 VI cube plus dot dot dot. So you can see that uh, my output will not be linear function of VI. A1 VI represents a linear term, but there will be so many other terms. A0 represents the constant DC term. VI square is the square of the input signal. VI cube is the cube of the input signal, all these terms will also be present in the output side. No doubt the values of A0, A1, A2, A3 will be varying and for most of the practical devices the values will keep on decreasing as we go from uh, A1 towards the higher order coefficients. So for most of the practical devices to have precise output expression in the form of input signal we can stop at the second power of the input signal. I can take the first three terms and I can precisely, uh, almost precisely represent the output signal. Starting from A3, the higher coefficients will be of very small value, so I can neglect those higher order terms. Now, let us see how are we going to use this concept in the discussion of balance modulator. Balance modulator has two diodes. So let me write down the expression of both the diode currents. Let's say ID1. ID1 will be nothing but A0 plus A1. Uh, I'll call input to the first diode as VI1 plus A2 into VI1 squared. I will neglect all the higher order terms of the uh, output signal. Let us now write down the similar expression for the second diode current ID2 which will be A0 plus A1 VI2 plus A2 VI2 squared. So here uh, I have taken the two diode currents as ID1 ID2 and the corresponding inputs to the diodes are VI1 and VI2. If you notice I am using the same coefficients A0, A1 and A2 for both the diodes which is possible if the two diodes are perfectly matched or identical to each other. Now what is my VI1? My VI1 is nothing but uh, V1 plus V2 as we have seen in the circuit diagram and my VI2 is V1 minus V2. These are the inputs going to both the diodes. Now let us uh, figure out what is going to be my final output current IO. As we have seen in the previous case because ID1 and ID2 are flowing in the opposite directions my IO will be ID1 minus ID2. Now if we perform this uh, ID1 minus ID2 let us see what we are going to get. ID1 is nothing but A0 plus A1. Now VI1 I will replace for VI1. VI1 is nothing but V1 plus V2 plus A2 VI1 square which is V1 plus V2 square. This is my ID1 minus ID2 will be A0 plus A1 V1 minus V2 plus A2 V1 minus V2 squared. So that's my ID1 and ID2. Now if you do the squaring 
and if you expand the brackets if you consider the summation you will see that this a0 will cancel out first of all then there are many terms which will cancel out for example a1 v1 a1 v1 will cancel out a1 v2 will not cancel out because here there's a plus sign and minus minus will make it plus so a1 v2 will get added in fact when you expand the square you will get uh, three terms v1 squared v2 squared and 2 v1 v2 out of these three terms v1 square and v2 square will cancel out the middle term will be 2 v1 v2 here and here it will be minus 2 v1 v2 so because there's a minus sign again in front of the term along with this minus sign it will become plus this is already plus so v1 v2 v1 v2 terms will get added so finally my expression will become 2 a1 v2 because a1 v2 gets added plus 2 v1 v2 2 v1 v2 will give me 4 v1 v2 along with a2 a2 was a coefficient which will remain there so that's my output uh, current io